Hey guys, so it is research writing time right now. So you spent the past couple terms, past couple months working on your research, bringing everything together, and now it's time for you to put that into some sort of document, some sort of report that makes sense, that allows you to communicate your research. And the most important aspect of that is usually the introduction or the literature review, and that first section that brings together all the papers that are in your discipline and in your academic space and think about how they relate to each other and think about what you're bringing to that table. So I actually identified three really, really, really interesting websites that I think will really support your research and your like literature review and your findings. These will help you save hours and hours of thinking about literature and thinking about connections and how things come together and, and making you sound a lot better when it comes to academic writing. So I thought rather than doing like individual videos for each of these websites, I thought I'd just share them all in one go and yeah it's not sponsored this is just websites that i think are really interesting and allow you and they're quite powerful actually they, they allow you to input a small amount of information and the output is is quite substantial so the first one and i'm going to kind of scoot to the side the first one is called connected papers and so you might have seen this um, around this is probably the most popular one it's called connected papers and essentially what you do is you would input some information so you might have an initial paper that your research is based on or a paper that like your supervisor has provided you and and you input that paper into this, this search bar. So I'm gonna just write down um, IQ gap. This is the person that I was working on uh, during my PhD. So I've just input that information in there. And what this does is it asks you to pick a specific paper. So what I've done here is I've just put down um, some terminology. But if you have a specific paper, that's even better. So then you would click on a paper. Um, and what it does is it builds a graph that shows you papers and other research that is related to that paper that you are interested in. So it really saves you a lot of time um, looking and searching. So as you can see here, there's this beautiful, uh, by the way, I love the visuals of connected papers so you can see here this this like visual graph so the way that it works as you can see it says that each node is an academic paper related to the origin paper so it takes one paper and that's your origin paper and it gives you like other academic papers and they're all the, the other circles that you can see and they're arranged in in different ways so firstly they're arranged according to their similarities so this could be based on like the topics this could be based on methods but they're, they're like the most similar papers and and I guess the ones that are closer should be the ones that you definitely talk about in your literature review. The node size is a number of citations. The node color is the publishing year. So you can see the group, this like teal color goes from like being really light and then more recent is dark. And this is really important because you want, especially in your literature review, you want to be talking about the most recent papers, particularly when you're talking about what's happening right now, when you're talking about like the gap in your literature and the gap in you know your knowledge. You can't mention a paper from like 20 or 15 years ago and saying like that's a gap in literature unless it genuinely is from 15 years ago. And then also similar papers have strong connecting lines and they cluster together. Um, so if we look at this graph, the, the actual origin paper is the one that you can see there in the middle. And then this paper down there, you can see how it connects. And it's quite a recent one. So this one's 2016, so that's quite recent but then if you go to like an older paper if I scroll down 2011 you can see that the color gets a bit lighter and it summarizes everything here on the right hand side as well so it gives you a nice summary of the paper and it also just tells you how many citations there are and if, what this website is really doing for you is it allows you to it does the literature search for you essentially so you have that one paper you're thinking right this is what I'm basing my research on and then you're able to use connected papers to find the other 20 papers that you want to write about and that you want to read and it's it just saves you hundreds and hundreds of scrolling through papers and, and time and, and just lots of effort so that's one really good one that I recommend the second website that I haven't seen anyone speak about is called open knowledge maps and again it gives you like a map of a topic so here what you can do is you can I'm gonna go with um, let's go with life sciences so you can choose what you want and again I'm gonna put in the same uh, I could get one and then I'm gonna say cell cortex um, so I'm giving my search and again it's giving you like this knowledge map and again this map what it does is it's all based on AI so it's all based on artificial intelligence and it's using like key terms um, abstracts looking at who's clicked on the papers the authors and it's really using quite powerful search terms to be able to uh, compile this map for you 
So what you can see here is that there are 25 relevant documents based on IQ gap one and the cell cortex. And I really like that. I really like that there are only 25 papers. And I know this is true because this is one of the proteins that I was looking at. There's not much that's known about it. So 25 sounds quite accurate. And so what these circles are, are they're like smaller disciplines. So if you look at this one, this one's based on cortical uh, microtubules. So that's a, quite a small discipline, which is quite different to um, looking at like constriction or looking at um, mic uh, microglia or things like that. So then if you go into the circle, you can see within that circle, you have four papers that are to do with this particular topic. And they are all amazingly open access as well. So if you're someone who doesn't have access to an institutional login, you can see that you can easily go click there and you can even download it as a PDF, export it and see how many citations there are um, and you can even save them, etc. So this is a really good way, again, to look at um, a specific small topic and that's what, you know, you know that that's your dissertation topic and then you can hone it down and really look at the 25 papers that are the most relevant. And they say here the most relevant are based on like um, data sources, looking at text similarity, um, the article metadata and, 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 and other ranking things like that. So it, this would be, I wouldn't say it's the ex an exclusive list, but for the most part, the most important papers that you'd be interested in, I would start here. I would look at all 25 here and then go from go from there and look at any others. But this would be a very con conclusive list um, and it's a good way of, of doing your um, research uh, for papers. And then this is probably one of my favourite ones as well and it's called Insightful and I very recently found this actually and I was playing around with it and I, I thought it was such a powerful tool to help, it, as it says here, accelerate your research. So there are two ways that this can accelerate your research. So the first here is that you can just look at a specific paper like what we did for the other two um, tools. So I'm just gonna um, write a specific paper. Um, so you can just search for one. I'm gonna just search here. You can see that I'm gonna do the same thing, right? So IQ gap one, let's go for the first one. Um, so it, again, it's making you a map based on this one paper, showing you the most relevant papers, the connected papers, the ones that are most similar. So what you should really find, if you do the same thing for all three websites, you should find similar papers popping up or slight differences. Um, but, but for the most part, they should be quite similar. Um, so again, you can see how many people have cited this paper. So 192 sites, which is really, really, really high. Um, 30 uh, sightings. Um, so let's, let's skip the tour. Published in 2003, it's open access, um, this many citations and graph, and then, oh, so you can go down. And this is where the powerful information comes in. So the first thing you can see are similar papers. So these are papers that cite the same papers as your selected paper. So this is looking, this is basically saying that your paper has these references and these papers here have the same references, which would mean that you're talking about a very similar thing. And so you can see, um, all of those papers here. So I would definitely start from this point um, and look at every single one of these papers because it means that they're very similar. Um, you then can go down and the next section is most important papers in the graph. And this bit is, uh, is ranked by page rank. Um, and these are, they tend to be a bit older. So these are papers that would have had like a really important finding or a finding that has been useful for a number of different uh, stems, a number of different aspects of research. So they've found a very important connection or a very important protein, or they've identified a structure of something. Um, and this has been key for the development of, of research in that topic. So these tend to be a bit older. So here, these are like from 19, 83, 1995, 1992, and they're integral for the understanding of what we know now. Then the next one is recent papers by the top 100 authors. So this is not necessarily looking at the specific topic, but looking at the authors that have published within that topic. So it actually, when you look at the papers, they're all related to what I'm interested in because those authors are also researching that field. So again, really good. Then you go down again, most important recent papers. Now this is probably what I would say is the least relevant section. Um, looking at them, they're not really, I mean, some are, that one is. But for the most part, I would say that 
it is more to do with uh, the general like field. So this would be good for like a literature review actually for like the introduction part or the, 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 the more general part, the more broad parts. But uh, if you want to be more specific, I would definitely go up and choose those ones. And then you've got more data here. You can see the top authors in this paper um, and, and, and top authors that have been have published in here. I'm sure I would probably see like, my supervisor here at some point. Um, and then you can also see top journals as well. So usually the papers are published in Nature, Cell, the Journal of Cell Biology. Funnily enough, all three that I've, I've published in. Envo Journal, I published there as well. So yeah, these are, this is a really good way of, again, and being able to take one paper that you know is 100% relevant to your work and then picking out other papers. These are three websites that are free to use and you can you know, use all three of them and cross check and see if the same papers are like linked. They should, they, they, they would normally be because they're using probably similar like AI tools and similar referencing tools. But yeah, this is, this is a good place to start, especially if you're just thinking, right, how do I even begin the literature search um, these are three websites that can really really help you um, and like I said they're completely free and they allow you to like find papers that you may not have otherwise found just doing like a standard literature search. So yeah I hope you guys find this helpful and if you want to see more like summary tools like this I'd be more than happy to do them. I've got other resources as well that I think are really helpful with like academic writing um, and, and referencing and things like that so let me know if you want to see a, a similar video and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!